Hello everyone, greetings from Bangalore, India. My name is Ram and in this video I am going to tell you something about a biconical antenna that I developed uh, that will allow you to do fairly reliable yet low cost pre-compliance EMI testing in your garage. Uh, I will be shortly listing this biconical antenna up for sale on eBay. Uh, I do have a couple of other nice things on eBay. I have brass gears for the 8640B signal generator. Uh, I have the RU800, which is a replacement for the U800 in found in Tektronix oscilloscopes. And this is uh, yet another product that I'm planning to introduce. Uh, typically, you will find that to conduct pre-compliance tests in a garage, uh, there are a lot of articles out there that tell you how to do so, but you need uh, in the 30 to 200 megahertz range, you need what's called a biconical antenna. And most of these articles you see on the web that uh, tell you how to do pre-compliance testing in your garage, including one by Tektronix, uh, suffer from a common flaw, which is they don't adequately address what is required in the 30 to 200 megahertz range. So what's a biconical antenna? What does it look like and why does it make it difficult to use one of them in a garage kind of setup? Well, the typical biconical antenna looks like this. It's, it's quite big as you can see and it's made of aluminum. It's got a long rod that connects a cap and a base. It's got short rods that emanate from the cap and medium sized rods that connect the elbows to the base. Uh, most, in most commercial biconical antennas, or practically all of them, all of these joints are welded, which means the thing is not really quite portable. Now most of these uh, biconical antennas, like the one I just showed you, uh, full-size biconical antennas, follow, uh, are designed in accordance with United States Mill Standard 461A. Uh, it's a document that dates back to the 1960s, uh, and it's now available uh, freely on the web. So what I did was to take uh, the same design and make a portable version of this biconical antenna by separating out all of these elements. So let me show you how this antenna is actually assembled. It does require a little bit of patience, especially because for one thing it's aluminum and aluminum threads can get a little sticky at times. Uh, and also because some of the threads are left-handed, it's very important to remember that. So how this thing is assembled is as follows. Uh, first you take the top and the bottom caps. You thread the longest rod into the top and the bottom. And when you do that, because the bottom threads are all left-handed, the top threads are all right-handed, if you hold the top and bottom and thread the rod into the top, it automatically gets threaded into the bottom as well. After connecting the rod to the top and bottom caps, the next step is to thread each of the short rods into the top cap. The next step is to thread the elbows into the short rods. That's a right-handed thread, by the way. Having done that, take the medium rod, thread it into the base, which is left-handed. So you basically thread it just a little bit into the base, align it with the elbow, and start threading it into the elbow. At that point, you'll notice that as you thread it into the elbow, it also gets threaded into the base. When you're finally done with the assembly process, voila, we have the complete half biconical antenna section ready. But you may not be done yet because remember, we need to make sure that the dimensions of this correspond as precisely as possible to the mill spec. The way you do that is to adjust the threaded lengths using a ruler and make sure that the distances from elbow to base and elbow to cap are as accurate as possible uh, looking at the mill spec diagram. It's possible to adjust them to less than uh, a millimeter's worth of inaccuracy. So you can actually get a very, very reliable biconical antenna section. Now the biconical antenna needs to screw into a base and the base is also a part of the kit. It's made of nylon, machined nylon with inserts on both ends and a cap and there is an n-type connector that's, that gets fitted here and this threads quite neatly into the base as you can see here the end result looks a bit like this and it's fairly rigid as you can make out so when you have two of these sections 
threaded into the machine nylon base, your biconical antenna is ready. And here is the finished product, the complete biconical antenna. Uh, do check out my listing, this is on eBay. Uh, search for the RBA1 biconical antenna and you should hit my listing. Thanks for watching, good luck with your EMI experiments.